Hi there, I'm very happy you tuned in and welcome to this video on how to draw like Kim Young Ji. In this video, we're gonna look specifically on how he uses perspective. If you wanna be able to draw like him and construct similar images or similar illustrations, you'll need to understand what kind of grid he's using for what kind of illustrations or drawings. In this video, we're gonna look at a couple of illustrations he's made and we're gonna draw over the grid and compare them to each other and see what kind of grids he's using overall. So let's have a look. First of all, we see this image. This is one of his more simpler images. Before I start throwing grids over his drawings and show you how he composes them, first let me very quickly explain how perspective works. First, I wanna start with the idea of a horizon line. Horizon line is very important because it sets the point where vanishing points are. So for example, let's say we have a vanishing point over here. Yeah, this is a right, vanishing point and then here we'll draw a left vanishing point let's use different colors so it's very clear what i mean with this if we have a right vanishing point and we draw lines from here if we wouldn't have a second vanishing point this is just a one point perspective i mean this is the most simple perspective there is you probably had this at school you know you draw something over here that's very big and you draw something over here which is very small and this creates depth if we want to take it one step further, we're going to add another vanishing point. And let's do that over here. We'll draw lines from it just as we did with the right vanishing point. And what you'll see is that you actually create extra depth because now we can create boxes. If we create a box in here, let's say we create a box over here, the lines will go down, but these lines will follow the vanishing point on the left. This line goes down and then the lines that are going going to the right will converge to the right vanishing point. So that means something like this. Now it's always good to draw through the boxes so you really develop your three-dimensional ID that you don't only draw the visible planes but also the planes that are invisible for you. But this gives you an idea of how the box works. Would you fill it with water or anything? Your three-dimensional brain goes on. Now we could actually add another vanishing point. A vanishing point that will be somewhere down here and let's say we move it way down there so these then the lines would be like this now what this does this actually changes these lines of the box instead of making them straight go down they also have to follow the rules of going towards the vanishing point so for this box that would mean that they would be going something like this now let's draw another box next to it over here following these rules now this box look good but if we move away further away from the middle our boxes will become more distorted so let's see what happens over here these are all going towards this point and these are going down now what you'll see over here is what is actually going on is that this box doesn't really look like a box it looks really distorted but if we follow the rules of the grid it is actually a box that fits within the perspective this is something that goes against your intuition but this is something he has trained himself in and uses a lot overall the perspective to create the idea of even more depth so let's have a look at an illustration and see how this works If we look at this illustration and we want to draw in the perspective grid, we just have to follow the lines that are very straight. The first line we can see over here is moving towards here. Another line we have over here. And then we have a third line if we follow this lag and we'll have a right vanishing point VP. Now, if we do the same for the left vanishing point, we'll get something like this. And again, we can do the same for the vertical one. And what you'll see is somewhat of a grid like I just explained. If we lower the opacity of the drawing, maybe even more, we can actually check what is going on. How does he use this perspective grid to first of all fill it and second of all to actually compose with it. So what you'll see is that he uses a lot of negative space. These are spaces that he doesn't use and the rest that he does use is filled with boxes. First of all, we could draw the lag in a box. And if we draw this lag in a box, you'll see 
that these lines are actually kind of going towards the left vanishing point. These lines are kind of going towards the right vanishing points and the lines that are going down are not really following the lines of the vanishing point to the bottom. But that's because the leg is not straight, it's kind of bent. The knee is more bent than it is, which is a normal sitting position like this girl as well. You see? So he's using it as a guide, but then he's also stepping away from it. But if we use it for this box, for example, or what is it, a briefcase, you'll see that these lines are really following the rules of the perspective grid he has chosen. Now we could do this for everything in the drawing, but I think the point is clear. He's not only doing this for drawings which have one scene into them, and that's actually what I meant when I was trying to explain how he uses this for composition, but he also does this in drawings which are a little bit more complex that are drawings like this. These are the drawings that he's very famous of because in these drawings, he's actually using multiple grids or multiple parts of the perspective grid in his drawing. He does this in this and in this drawing. Now, and what I wanna do is I wanna take this drawing and look a little bit closer to it and see what is going on. So what kind of grids is he using and how could you learn to do that as well? First of all, if we look at this drawing, it seems that there are several scenes. So one of the first scenes I see is this guy taking a picture. This is actually himself. And we see another guy standing over here with someone else and hold this group of people as well. Now this is the first scene, but it doesn't seem that they are standing in the gr on the ground because beneath them, there's actually another scene which seems to be going to till here because this again, or actually this is another scene. And this scene goes to here. We're here, we're outside. And then here, we're inside, still here. And then here, we're outside again. So overall, we have five scenes. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's have a look at all these scenes specifically, one by one, and let's see what kind of grid he is using. Now, a big difference before we can look at these scenes, we need to understand what the difference is between a linear perspective and a curved linear perspective. Now, a curved linear perspective is actually this. First, we were looking at a linear perspective, which was actually a right vanishing point, the horizon, the left vanishing point, the vanishing point below. But the big difference here is actually that the lines are curved. Now the reason the lines are curved is because actually the lines are going over the horizon line and meeting at the other point. You could also use that for the right vanishing point. In this particular lens, you could say that the right vanishing point is over here and the left vanishing point is over here. But nonetheless, also for the middle vanishing point, the lines would have to go and meet another vanishing point. Now, in the case of this thing, these vanishing points would be like on the other side behind you. So they would actually be like on a curve around you, but they would meet eventually somewhere behind you. So that's basically how the curve linear or five point perspective works. Five points because we have one, two, three, four five points. It's important to know this because if we're going to look at the scenes, you'll see that he's using different places on this grid. So let's have a look at how he does it. So if we look at the first grid, we'll see that he seems to have a vanishing point, which is almost on illustration. What about the other vanishing point? This is also almost on the illustration. And this is something that is very typical Kim Young Ji. He actually uses vanishing points which are almost on the visual. But that doesn't normally count for the vanishing point which is more the bottom vanishing point. This one is always a little bit further away. You could see that this is somewhere converging over there. Now what we'll see and we if we check this with the perspective git, what you'll see is that this grid is actually has a couple of points. It seems to be that the horizon line is rounded. So if we check it, it has to be this one. This is the horizon line. While you could also use this as a horizon line, but he's using this one as a horizon line. And then there's a vanishing point over there and there, and then there's one below very far off. If we check it on the grid, then we have one here. He might use, it seems to be that the right vanishing point was farther away. So he might have used a vanishing point over here, over here, and then this one. So this would approximately be the frame he's using for that drawing. Now let's have a look at another one. The 
bottom right one. Now as you see I've already drawn a line over it but what you could see is that here he's actually choosing a, a horizon which is straight. It seems that the vertical lines are curved and the horizontal and uh, the left and right vanishing points are also. So this is actually a one point perspective with a curved linear perspective grid over it. So if we look at this grid this is actually this one. It's right in the middle. Although the drawing is tilted it's still using this grid. Let's have a look at another one. Now, if we look at this one, this is actually really zoomed out because here the horizon line seems to be like this. There seems to be a vanishing point over here because the lines are moving like this. And then there's another vanishing point over here. And then we have another vanishing point here in the center because these lines seem to be moving like that. Now there's another vanishing point over here, but that's only for this wall. So we could kind of forget about that one and then we have again a vanishing point to the bottom which is pretty far away now again he is using a perspective grid here if we look at this perspective grid he actually seems to be using a grid which is using the whole grid so it's very zoomed out we could say that he's actually using the whole grid here or maybe even more of this grid because they also seem to be there's another grid showing in this one if you look closely you could see over here that the lines are moving out again. So if we check that actually what is going on is that there is another grid over here, which he's using and you could say it's actually like this. Now, and if we look at the last scene for this video, then we have this one. And if we look at this scene, you could say that the horizon line is somewhere here. If we follow these feet, it seems like the horizon line or the vanishing point for this specific part of the drawing is actually pretty far away compared to his other drawings and that's because he is actually using a different kind of lens now what do i mean with a different kind of lens let me show you if we zoom in a lot on this drawing this is a typical fish eye lens so it's a very a wide angle lens so it shows a lot but if we zoom in more this you could say is a telescope lens that's something that's looking at very far away. A normal lens would be something something like this. And for this drawing, he's actually using a lens that is like this, that is showing this part of the drawing. So if we zoom out a bit, he's using this part of the drawing. Now, what it shows us is that in most cases, he's actually not using more than three vanishing points. Because in this drawing, he's using three vanishing points. In this drawing, he's using, well, what, actually one vanishing points in which he's curving the lines. And then in this drawing, he's actually using, well, this is the most difficult drawing you could say, because he's using five or maybe four vanishing points. How can we train this and become a Kim Young Ji ourselves? Well, what's good to understand is that if we look at the grid, we could actually divide it up into several areas. So for example, looking only at this area is just a one point perspective. If you decide to make these lines straight, they are just a one point perspective, right? There's less thinking about the lines that are going up and down because they, they are just straight. And there's less thinking about the lines that are going from left to right because they're also going straight. The only lines you have to think about are lines that are going far away. Now, if you make them a little bit curved, you get a five point perspective, but the vanishing points are very far away. So this is just the first area we need to understand. Now, if we understand this area, then we can move to this area and slowly build up our understanding of a two point perspective, a three point perspective and a four point perspective. What I advise you to do if you really want to become Kim Young Ji is to draw out a grid or just randomly pick a area on this grid. So for example, I would say this area. We pick out this area, we enlarge it. Now let's lower the opacity to make it difficult for ourselves. And let's try to draw in boxes and things in this grid and follow the rules. Now, if we do this a couple of times and we're very used to drawing boxes in these kinds of grids and even cylinders in these grids, then we could start and build an arm in this grid. All right, I'm losing myself. It's just a very nice way to practice yourself on understanding how perspective works. And 
understanding perspective actually gives you the tool to basically create an environment which you can fill with any kind of objects you want. So I hope this video was helpful for you to understand how Kim Young Ji uses perspective in his drawings. Leave a like, leave a comment if you have any questions, put them on the YouTube and I'll try to answer them and help you as far as I can. Thanks a lot and have a great day.